trying to look at the bright side of Brexit. I'm joined by Mohamed Chukir, the Chief Investment Officer of Climate Hambros. Thank you for joining me. Pleasure. So um, the general mood when thinking about Brexit is not particularly optimistic. Yet, uh, are there any opportunities that you think uh, markets may be overlooking among the general gloom and doom? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uncertainty clearly on how the Brexit negotiations will pan out over the coming months and years. But the issue here is it's going to take years and the markets are not going to stop to wait till the final outcome. As we've seen in the last seven, eight months since the Brexit vote, actually markets have performed exceptionally well. So corporates have just got on with their business and the CEOs that we speak to are still investing in their businesses and expanding their businesses. So plenty of opportunities and there are a couple of sectors that stand out amongst the rest. So give me a few examples. Which sectors do you think are going to be uh, benefiting the most out of this situation? Yeah, so, so one of the sectors that we like is the tech sector. And mm -hmm. this is not just in the UK, European, but even on the global basis. And, and, and the attraction of the tech sector is we're seeing a huge expansion in the economy. So there is this uh, resumption of growth that leads companies to invest in technology and capex. And capital expenditure typically goes towards IT. So that's, that's one tailwind for the tech sector. The other tailwind is actually valuations are not stretched. So the tech sector at the uh, height of the dot-com crisis was trading at 40, 50 times earnings. That's if companies even had earnings. But now they're trading at 14, 15 times earnings, which actually is quite compelling given the growth, mm. growth potential. So that's, that's one sector that we like. Um, the other one is financials. Okay. So uh, financial sector, clearly the eye of the storm in the financial crisis. But as it stands, actually, they have attractive valuations. They've got a growing economy. They've got a normalization of interest rates. All of these things are supportive of the financial sector. Clearly, the regulation and the uncertainty about Brexit is, is a headwind. But financials will navigate that as they have done in previous crises. And this includes banks? Yes. So banks uh, stand to benefit from a changing environment. Banks like change because they can adapt their business models, they can reform the way that they do business in order to uh, essentially capitalize on the opportunity. Clearly, banks are used to recessions and or geopolitical crises or regulatory crises. These are normal for banks. And not all banks are equal in that respect. But in the last few years, we've seen them strengthen their balance sheets. We've seen them improve their cash flows. And from that uh, angle, they actually stand to benefit in the coming years. But there are certain changes that I'm sure banks would, would do without. So, for example, the loss of uh, the potential loss, we still don't know whether this will happen or not, sure. of uh, passporting rights, maybe yeah. one of them. So how do you feel about this? Yeah, so actually speaking to a few bank CEOs, they clearly are concerned about this. And there's actually a very strong body that's, if I want to use the word lobbying, and working with government to make sure that there is a positive outcome for the banks in the Brexit negotiations. It's being negotiated at the banking level, at clearly the Greater London Authority, but representing London and the financial system. So there's, uh, there are a lot of bodies that are getting together to make sure that banks don't lose their competitive advantage. And I think the Prime Minister and the Chancellor are all too aware that you do not want to damage this very strong sector in the economy. But should they lose it, this, a change that uh, is potentially harmful for them? Yeah, th th exactly. They, they could lose it. But as we were just discussing, banks are used to change. So if they do lose it, they'll find another way to capitalize on the opportunity. We've seen some banks clearly reconsider their lo location. So if you think about whether they're based in London or in Europe, or mm -hmm. some banks that are based in both. So I think there is an advantage of actually being based in Europe and in the UK, because the UK is still a major economy. You don't want to be out of the UK as a bank, even if you're not able to distribute into Europe. So they, they will navigate that. That's, that's really the conversations we've been having with them. Yeah, well, thank you for your comments. Great, thank you.